This is a shoe review for the Under Armour Velocity Wind 2. There is no I in team, but there are two I's in Velocity. The Velocity Wind is touted as a lightweight speed day offering. However, coming in at 8.9 ounces or 252 grams in my men's US size 9, it feels more like over armor rather than under armor. Or as most people call it, armor. Despite the weight at 80 something dollars on discount, are these shoes worth the purchase? For the answer to that question, let's ask a guy who buys all of his running shoes just like everybody else. He's a jag, just a guy, and his name is Midlife Runner. Thank you, narrator, you handsome bastard. Okay, time for a shoe review. We haven't done one of these in about six weeks and I appreciate you all not unsubscribing in that amount of time. A whole lot's happened. Adidas came out with like a $500 shoe and I'm sure you're just dying to know what I think about it. Well, I'd buy it if they made more of them. $500 for me in my tax bracket is like buying a brick of ramen. You know what I mean? Uh, just kidding. Actually, I work in coffee and I have three kids, so I'm never running in the shoe. Anyway, Under Armour, they made a shoe. Technically, they've made lots of shoes. This one's called the Velocity Wind 2. Here are 10 things about the shoe. Number one, why I bought this shoe. I bought this shoe because it was 80 something dollars. It normally retails at about 160. Since I buy my own shoes, I really kind of stick to the main brands like Adidas and New Balance and Asics, Big Farm, Big, Big Pod, Big, Big, I don't know, something corporate. Anyway, I do want to try Ultra and Topo and Under Armour. I just really can't afford, I don't have that much money to buy all the shoes. So at 50% off, I decided to give it a whack. Number two, the most important thing, what does it feel like to run in this shoe? It's honestly nothing that special. It's jazz, it's just a shoe. Right? And I don't, I don't give pity points and say, oh, good on Under Armour because they used to make shoes that weren't that great. And then they made the leap to make industry standard kind of shoes. Like a review from On about the thunderstorm saying it's the best shoe that they, you've run in since the last On shoe you ran in, the <laughs> On Overcast or whatever, does me no good. So, okay, it means nothing to me. Okay, this is just a shoe. Hey, do you do you think that ASICS has a patent on the Cumulus and that on just like loses sleep at night? How old are you? Okay, what is it actually like to run in this shoe? Farm, F-A-F, FAF. Okay, it's especially in the heel kind of feels like a brick, which is ironic because the UA flow midsole is all one compound. There is no outsole, which brings me to point number three. Number three, there is no outsole. Now this shoe then is intended to be run more at the track. I did take it on the roads and I thought it was grippy enough. I did not run in inclement weather, so I can't tell you for sure if it's gonna do well in wet conditions. Quattro, warning on the sizing. You may wanna go half size up. I didn't feel necessarily that it was too short. I did feel, however, that the depth up at the toe box was maybe a little bit too shallow. So this happens with me on some shoes like the Skechers Max Road 5, the Rebel V2, uh, the Rebel V3. I go half size up on those, but mostly just to have a little bit more room with my toes. Maybe I just have a big toe. Anyway, number five. The upper, it is called UA Warp. And I can tell you, they just make these names up. I don't know what it means. Super engineered. Yeah, it's a pretty decent upper. Number six, I do like the colorway. Number seven, it, it comes in at 8.9 ounces, which is more like a daily trainer weight. You know, for a speed day shoe, it's kind of chubby. <laughs> kind of chubby, you know. Uh, number nine, the ride. Andrew, uh, two things. One, you're on number eight, actually. And number two, you already talked about the ride. Yeah, but I got more thoughts on it. You know, it's not not like a hot take, but maybe like a like a warm take or something. But this, this shoe's not bouncy, okay? It's it's not a bouncy shoe. It's got some responsiveness. It's got a, a this very slight toe off too. It is more like, like an Adidas shoe, like the Audio 6 or 7 or something like that, more than like a Puma Liberate Nitro or like a Nike Free RN. Those shoes are more pliable. This one has some more rigidity and that's, that's where the little pop comes from. But I would still probably buy other shoes in this category other than this one. The Trinusa 14 or 15, I feel like it has just as much snap, if not more. It's a little bit lighter weight. It's slightly more stable. It's just a better all around shoe in construction as well. I would also buy the Puma Liberate Nitro version two. That one is a little bit less pliable. It has more snap to it. I would buy the Velocity Wind over the Adi Zero SL. Okay. 
number 10. Lastly, in a world full of Takumi Sens, I would not buy the Velocity Wind 2 again. Like, good on Under Armour for joining the competition, but their foam is just not on the same level as Fuel Cell, as Zumex, as Flight Foam Blast Plus, as Light Strike Pro. Maybe just regular old Light Strike. Incoming shots fired. Ah, got meetings. Best be scooting. Was that old Greg?